happened, everyone? Look here. Here we go. Right in front of us. <laughs> what? <laughs> How's that? Wow, this looks like a big male. I wonder if this isn't Tingana. Let's have a look. I think it's him. I think it's him. Let's see. He might be moving down into this drainage line. It's really warm for a leopard to be moving around. I'm so surprised. Okay, let's see. Let's see where he's going. Well, there we go. How is that? <laughs> I'm just trying to have a look and see if we can follow him. He might, uh, hopefully he doesn't disappear down and lie right in the drainage. He's just in front of us. Have a look. He's moving down there. He might decide to find some shade and Texan, Texan, do you copy? Um, um, for, we've just located a male leopard over here. Um, if you want to come in from that side, you might get visual. Yeah, FM is actually just come out the drainage line. So come in directly where you are and you should get a view from there and maybe you can stick with him. And see, I'm just letting Taxon... Hold on, you can see him moving there. Um... Um, oh, this is going to be difficult for us to move through here. Yeah? Hold on, I'm going to get back onto the road. Luckily, the other guide is on the other side of the drainage line. There he is, there he is. Oh, I wonder if he's potentially hunting. Have a look, there he is. Oh, what a nice surprise for this afternoon. We've been very lucky the last, last few days with... Um, with predators and this is definitely one of this is definitely one of my favorite leopards I must be honest it's just something about seeing a big tom like this <laughs> and all of you sound very excited to see leopard so you see things happen for a reason maybe if we didn't have those technical issues earlier we wouldn't have been able to follow him or we wouldn't have found him rather we would have we would have driven past him who knows he's going to come out in front of us look here here he comes As I said, it's very strange that he's moving during the heat of the day. It just shows you, everyone, often people say, well, leopards don't move around during the day. Well, this is, this is a clear indication that they do. They'll move around whenever they want, if they're hungry or thirsty or possibly just trying to find a new, new area. He's going into an even thicker spot. I think, um, I think I'm going to stick on this side of the drainage. It just works out if we work as a team. There's Texans on the other side. Um, and he will be able to then follow him from that side if he sticks that side. And I can follow him from this side in case he crosses back through again. But I wonder if he hasn't laid down now. I don't see him moving. Is he still there? Standing now. I'll just have a look and see. This is really exciting. I'm going to stick with this leopard and see where he goes. Hopefully he settles down for us. But let's go across to James, who apparently has some lions in the Mara. 
Oh dear, it sounds like we don't have James's audio at the moment. So James also has some gremlins, but not to worry. We've still got a lovely view of this leopard. He's now, he's just walking off to the left. I wonder if he's going to cross back down into the drainage line. It's much cooler down there for him. Let's go, let's go out this drainage and see. Maybe we can try following through there. I really don't want to lose this leopard. I'm going to try my best to stay with him. M. Ruth, you asked, do you think he's looking for ladies or food? Are you referring to me or the leopard? <laughs> <laughs> M. Ruth, I think he's potentially looking for, for food. Now, the male leopards, what's so wonderful with the male leopards? Uh, there he goes. Just caught a glimpse of him. Hold on. Sorry, M. Ruth, I'm just trying to stick with him so that I don't lose him. Oh, this is always difficult moving through this monkey thorn. I don't like it very much. Bad for the vehicles. Um, so M. Ruth, I think in this situation it's food, and I'll tell you why, because um, this male, oh sorry, 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 you see I struggle to multitask, clearly. M. Ruth, the thing is with male leopards, the wonderful thing with male leopards is they don't have to worry about looking for females at all. The females come to them. For a male leopard, all he needs is, I wonder if he hasn't found a shady spot around here somewhere. Can you see him, Senza? I've lost him. Oh no, you see, this is exactly what I was hoping wouldn't happen. I can hear Franklin's calling. Hold on, I think he's just gone through here. So Emrith, as I was saying, the male leopards, with them having large territories, they attract the females. The females come and look for them. Uh, I can't get there now. See, this is the thing with these male leopards. They can disappear so quickly. I really hope I don't lose him. So the females, uh, they will go and present themselves and look for the males. And he will then be able to mate with the female, but he doesn't have to go look around. All he has to do is mark his territory and defend it against other males. Oh, it's a steep drainage line here now. He could have gone anywhere. I don't know where he's gone everyone. I think he's gone down into this drainage line somewhere here. But let's have a look. I'm going to try to keep an eye out. Hopefully, if he doesn't come out, then we know he's gone to lie down in there somewhere. So let's just wait and have a look. I can hear the Franklins are all calling. He's clearly disturbed them over there. He's just in that thicket, but it's so thick we can't see anything. Here he comes. I can see him. I can see him. There he comes. He's going to be coming towards us. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> what a beautiful male leopard. You know what, everyone? He might walk straight towards us. Might walk straight towards us. Come this way. There we go. I'm actually just going to back up a little bit. So I don't want to block his way. Yeah, he's coming straight out this side. He might decide to walk right in front of us. There he comes. 
He's so close, we can't even see him. There he goes. Taxi, I've got visual again. The side, southern side of the drainage. He's either seen or heard something. Numzan. Um, just having a look. Where is he gone now? You still just see him there, he goes. I wonder how we are going to follow him through there. There are now, there are now three vehicles here, which is, which is a bit better. It's a bit easier then for us to work and try and stick with this, this leopard. see let's uh, let's go across to James sorry I need to try and get out of here quickly it's gonna be tricky but let's go across to James up in the Mara hopefully his audio is fixed and he's got those lions <laughs> thanks Taylor I'm trying my utmost to stay with this leopard he's moving through a very dense area at the moment um, shows you I wonder at difficult for us to find them because they move through the most Difficult areas to maneuver through, but I keep getting a glimpse of him every now and then. I'm hoping he decides to settle down. I don't know why he's moving so much in the heat of the day, but I'm sure he will go and settle down at some point. Oh, wow, this is thick. And I think even the guys on the other side won't be able to see him anymore I can't move anywhere else now don't know where that leopard's gone. I have no idea. I can't see anything through here. Let's just wait a few minutes and see. Maybe he pops out again. And <laughs> it just shows you, I mean, and you can see this area. Apparently all of you are very excited too to see this male leopard. Yeah, and I just hope that he comes this side, but sure this is thirsty work. <laughs> a little scrub here that was right next to us just moved through the bushes right next to us hiding in the dense thicket there he goes <laughs> it's just disappeared there he is there he is we got him again there he is see patience everyone look he's coming through oh hang on is that another leopard just hold on everyone that looked like a different leopard I caught it only caught a glimpse Oh, sorry. <laughs> you saw the, you saw the, the oh, the scrub here. Oh, no, okay. So I think, is he coming this side now? Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> I'm s just about stuck here, everyone. I don't, sorry. Oh, there he is. Hold on, hold on. 
he spotted the scrub here, that scrub here that moved. Let's see. Oh, sorry, Senza. Let's see. Let's see what he does. He'd have to be really fast. Sorry, just the way he moved. He moved so quickly from... Hold on a second. Sorry, the guys are now asking about this leopard. Jackson and Rex and I've just got visual again. Um, he's on this side. I don't know if you can see where I am. It's just still south of the uh, Rex. It sounds like I'm south e um, southeast of you. Yeah. Can you still see the leopard though, Senza? He's just behind the thicket. So, so as I was saying, everyone, the way he moved, he just from that very slow walk that he was doing through the through the drainage line, it changed immediately. And I caught a glimpse of this leopard moving. It looked he looked like a younger, more agile leopard. The way he moved, he clearly saw that scrub here, and now I think he's interested in having a look to see if he can potentially get a meal. Now, even this male leopard will feed on a scrub here. Not a substantial meal, but a meal nonetheless. Let's just sit tight and see. Well, I think we've done really well to stay with him moving through this dense area. I think in summer it will be almost impossible to move through. Yeah, now with winter it's a lot more open, it's a bit easier. Um, but we still have to be sensitive with just driving vehicles off-road and that we actually, I think this is the first time I've done serious off-roading for quite some time. There he goes now. There he goes. Moving a little bit quicker. I wonder if he's seen something. Delrez, you said, is it possible that he gets up in a tree and rests? It's possible, Delrez. It is possible. Um, no, sorry, let me just... But I think with him moving around like this, if he decides to rest, he might just stop and rest. Shade somewhere. There we go. There we go, it's a nice view of him at least. I don't want to disturb him if he's seen something. But I think he's just hunting everyone. I think that's why this leopard's moving around so much. What a beautiful pose. <laughs> Just have a look. Apparently, Megan says she can see what looks like a little bit of blood on his neck there. I see that now, Megan. Yeah, it looks a little bit reddish there. Maybe a scratch, maybe got into a scrap with another male leopard. Um, who knows? Maybe that. Maybe that's why he's, uh, he's moving around a little bit. I don't know, but he... Sorry, I'm just uh, I'm also listening to the radio. Obviously, the other guys would like to see this leopard. Uh, yeah, Rex and Tax, I've still got visual of this animal. Um, we just in that block where you where you last saw me, Rex. Uh, I'm I'm gonna stick with him and try to follow him through here if he does move. Uh, he's stationary at the moment, but he's facing south. Yeah, 
now. So who knows? I mean, we I haven't seen Tingana for quite some time, so I don't know if he got into a scrap with another male leopard. Snazzy, you asked, is he panting because he's hot? Yes, most definitely. Is um, it's very warm this afternoon, so so I think uh, with him um, moving around so much, it is quite warm. Oh, he's going back to the drainage line now. Let's see. I wonder. Oh, uh, Rex and taxis changed directions again. He's heading back north towards that drainage line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the scrub bear just ran out. Here it is. It's right next to us. <laughs> Do you see that scrub bear? Good bit of a fright. Did that leopard? I can't see him now. It's just on the other side of the thicket. Here we go. He's coming in front of us. Here he comes. Wow, there's a strong wind that has just picked up now. It's a bit of moisture in the air. It smells almost like um, like rain, but there it is. Oh, thank you, thank you. Maybe he stays there for us. Let me try and move a little bit. Hold on. Where is he going? Has he spotted something else through there? And you can see actually with this windy windy condition now It's actually ideal for this leopard to, to hunt in Can you still see him? Which way did he go? He's lying down there um, For him to, to hunt in this type of weather is ideal He's walking through this drainage line It's nice and thick He can ambush prey um, the leopards have been known to to be fringe hunters, so they walk on the on the the edge of the thicket and the clearings, especially drainage lines, and see if there's anything possibly feeding. In Yala, Kudu, Impala, a little Stenbok, Daker, anything like that. Okay, if I don't move, I think we're going to lose him. Ah, uh, how am I going to get around this? There's a tree stump behind me, everyone, so that's not ideal. Let me see if anyone else is staying. Some of the other guys are just not patient enough. <laughs> They're leaving us to do all the work. <laughs> well, I'm still trying to... So this leopard, he's still moving quite a lot. But he's still on the move through a very thick part of this this area on the edge of the drainage line I'm hoping it decides to lie down at some point but let's stick with him and try. I mean we've definitely put in the hard work to try and follow him uh, let's see so we should get a hopefully another view of him it's been it's been very tricky to follow this male leopard but uh, just letting another vehicle go past and because he's walking on the edge of the bank there the whole way. Mm. Don't be scared, Senzo. <laughs> oh, I don't know how signal hopefully will stay. I don't think we'll do signal down there. We shouldn't. can see him there. Uh, I can just see the shape of him through the trees. Uh, it's actually a bit difficult to see him. Wow, this leopard's definitely given us the run around. There he goes. You can see his movement through the through the branches. Hold on a second.
front of you. That's a bit of a problem. We can't see him now where we are. We're a little bit stuck at the moment. We're down in the drainage line. Um, <laughs> he's lying just above us. He's actually just on this ridge right here. Um, not far from us. But again, I think, you know, our patience will hopefully pay off. Maybe we'll get a get a view of him. There's, there's no rush. There's no rush, so we'll, we'll wait. We've been trying to follow him very carefully, and I think we've done well to stick with him through this thick area. At least we're a bit sheltered from that wind. Remember I said the wind picked up quite a bit this afternoon. I don't know why. I don't know if it's bringing in bad weather perhaps. No clouds or anything, but I wonder if maybe this evening possibly a front coming through. See, that was uh, some serious off-road driving, dodging trees, maneuvering around, trying to get through that thick area that this leopard was moving in. It just shows you from time to time how difficult it is to follow these predators when they are moving. Chandler or Chandler, you asked, why does a leopard sometimes walk with its tail raised high? Well, the reason is often if they are moving around and they are being alarm called at by birds or, or monkeys or anything like that, even antelope like impala um, or kudu, what they'll often do is they'll raise their tails like that and show that white tip of the tail. They want to make themselves more visible and the reason they do that, all the theory behind it, is that they then make themselves more visible so that they basically saying, I'm not a threat, I'm just moving past, I don't want to hunt you, I know I've been seen and they try to get through that area, hopefully the antelope stop alarm calling at them. That's the theory. It makes sense though. So they raise their tails, I've seen it many times, as soon as birds alarm call at them, um, or any animals alarm call at them, they raise their tails, make themselves more visible, and then they try to get out of that area. Leopards don't like attention being drawn to them, so they'll prefer to move away and get away from all that noise and all that attention. I think he's still just above us. I'm just having Chitty chatty you asked how do we stand and you say you get sorry and you say you get uh, you get stuck in this in the on the beach and all the time. Um oh, no, I'm to, um, <laughs> <laughs> Do you wanna get stuck? Yeah, yeah I was thinking I wanna get stuck. I think I've got us a little view here. Oh, a bit... So, chitty chitty Meg, luckily I didn't get stuck. It's all experience. <laughs> it's all experience and practice. Look, I think I've been stuck once before in my career. <laughs> I used to, um, there he is. You can see the spots there to the right hand side. You can see his face over there. Can we lighten that a little bit, Senzo? Ah, oh, there we go. There you can see him. Beautiful pattern. <coughs> difficult, so difficult, so well hidden. But we'll, we'll sit here for a while and hopefully we get another view of him. Alright, now uh, we'll sit here for a while and see what he does. Let's go back to James and his torn shirt. I wonder, was it a lion attack, James, or what is the reason for your, for your, 
<laughs> torn shirt. Let's go find the fashion police. That's a good one, James. <laughs> uh, and now, we've fortunately got a better view of this leopard. And he's lying on the bank. There, I did see an Inyala or two moving just on the other side of the drainage line. They moved through. Um, but it's a, it's a bit tricky. I think he's curious, but to cover the distance through the drainage line to get to that Inyala, he'd expose himself and wouldn't um, wouldn't uh, have that. Uh, what's the, the <laughs> the element of surprise. Sorry, everyone. As I said, expose himself. I was thinking of James with his torn shirt. <laughs> it's actually a wonderful view of that leopard. It shows you how well they can camouflage and disappear in the thickets. Look at his concentration. I mean, look at that. Sinak, um, you asked if these leopards um, like to be seen or they're more secretive cats. I think leopards in general, um, you know, it doesn't matter if it's this male or a female or any leopard, Sinak. It, um, I do think they are... Uh, they prefer not to be seen because they are secretive animals and they are elusive. Look at that concentration, amazing. But, but, you know, we we try to be as sensitive as possible and they're not always followed and they're not always seen. They can disappear very quickly if they want to. We just managed to stick with him this afternoon. But you can see it appears as if he's still very focused on what he is interested in, and that's hunting, by the looks of things. He's going to move again or if he's now decided it's probably time to rest as I said I was surprised at how far this leopard moved during the um, during the day and during the warmth of this afternoon it was quite warm it's cooling down now because of the, um, the cold breeze <laughs> Megan says the weather Oh, weather station says it's 82 degrees Fahrenheit or 28 degrees Celsius. That is incorrect, Megan. <laughs> that is just wrong. I wonder if this weather station's inside, perhaps, in a controlled environment. <laughs> Megan says she's going to she's going to stop telling me the weather. <laughs> well, I think, Megan, you know what? I think it's a few degrees warmer whenever we get that. I do think it's a few degrees warmer. I'm just putting a jacket on quickly. This breeze is quite chilly. <laughs> um, Manushka, you were saying you can hear a Cape Turtle Dove calling. Yeah, there is one calling behind us somewhere. You can probably hear it. I could easily sit here for most of the afternoon um, and I do know that patience pays off.
Nolia, you asked, can leopards get depressed like elephants do? Um, sure, Nolia, I don't, I don't think that's a, to be honest, I don't think that's a, a fair question um, or fair comment to make about the elephants. I, I, I don't think elephants get depressed, uh, you know, and uh, not at all. Now, some people may not agree with me, but I, I've always said that I, we do need to be very, very careful of um, of giving animals human emotions. It's completely different for them, and you know, we I think how depressed um, or depression is completely different to uh, an elephant possibly feeling upset about something. Now, I think. You know, people always say, oh, these elephants have graveyards and they move past those areas and they mourn the the, the, the dead. I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. I think, uh, firstly, elephant graveyards are a bit of a myth. Um, what happens is the elephants, with age, their teeth start to wear out and wear down. So the elephants would go into areas where the vegetation was softer and easier to feed on and they'd usually die there from old age. And the reason is because because of the um, uh, because of the the food that was in that area so it wasn't an elephant graveyard that they went to specifically to die it was because the vegetation was softer for them to feed on that's why they would go there and that's why they died in the area the elephants move past and if they come across elephant carcasses they smell and they pick up the scent obviously of the carcass and they investigate but I don't think it's a, a case of mourning as we would not at all. I think they probably recognize that there was possibly an elephant that died there. But we need to be very, very careful of giving them human emotions. So no, elephants don't get depressed. Um, you know, um, I mean, I think, look, you'd probably see in circuses and, and zoos, if I must be honest, you'd see animals, um, uh, spirits, I think, get lost somewhat because they're not in the wild they're not roaming free so yeah I do think so a depression maybe to the extent we feel I don't think so now for leopards for example when female leopards lose cubs on a regular basis cubs lose adults and um, that happens too males will kill other males uh, they, they, I've never seen a, a female leopard mourn or, or get go or get depressed for a long period of time for losing a cub. They've lost cubs. Within a few months, they're mating again, and they'll have new cubs. That's nature. So we need to be careful of giving them too many human emotions. Yes, they do feel to an extent, but in terms of mourning and recognizing the loss of a cub and mourning for years, or, or leopard mourning, or elephant mourning for years after a death of of a sibling or a youngster, I don't think that happens. Not at all. Nature, nature is harsh. Um, nature has a way of, I think, recovering very quickly. The animals do. Oh, that male's looking right at us now. So I think we need to bear that in mind all the time and not get, not always want to put our human emotions on the animals. We anthropomorphize these animals far too much. In, in my opinion, and I may be wrong, but um, but I think we need to be cautious of it. And just understand again, you know, we are here to view and appreciate nature. Um, nature's not not always easy. Uh, nature's harsh. There's death. There's destruction. But there's also new life. There's happiness. There's new cubs, for example, in the Nkuhuma Pride that we saw the other day. There's um, lions that get attacked, lions that die, leopards that get injured, leopards that die, leopard cubs that um, grow up and move into new areas. There's always a balance. There's a natural balance. I think uh, some of my friends in Johannesburg were actually watching Safari Live too. Some friends from my rugby club. <laughs> uh, I'm actually miss playing rugby. So Clive and Dylan and all of them, if they're watching, hope you guys are having a great afternoon in Johannesburg. It's a tough life out here. I have to sit with this leopard in this drainage line. <laughs> I love teasing them about it. They get quite upset. They're very jealous, I know.
but um, actually Dylan was studying to be a guide. He's a bit younger than I am, and he's studying to be a guide at the moment, and will hopefully go on to work at a lodge somewhere. A lot of guides still studying, still getting qualifications, learning about the bush, which is wonderful. It's really a, um, a, a career choice nowadays. I think before guiding used to be something people did from time to time for maybe a year or two, but it's becoming a lot more of a, a career choice for certain people. Um, and some guides like myself either work in the lodges for a while, then move on, and private guiding, whatever the case may be, owning their own companies. Now, let's sit with this leopard for a little while longer. But while I do that, let's go across to Taylor and find out how her afternoon is going in the Mara. <laughs> VM makes me laugh. So the Mara smells like the sea without the water or the ocean or the ocean or the salt. <laughs> so it smells like sand. VM, is that what you're saying? That's a very interesting description. <laughs> Made me laugh. Um, uh, the Mara, I mean, Juma at the moment doesn't smell like much because it's very windy. So all the smells are getting drifted away. But um, there, there, is, there is still that uh, sweet scent in the air from a lot of the knobthorn trees, the flowers at the moment. Um, yeah, so we definitely still smell that. Now, I was chatting earlier about um, my friend starting to guide and it becoming more of a career. And Nisha, you were asking what is the difference between a, 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 was it a ranger and a field guide? Um, well... Yeah, a safari guide and a game ranger. Well, it, 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 technically, technically, um, in the in the past, the, the terms have meant the same. Uh, yeah, the, the terms have, have meant the same thing. But technically, the correct terminology for what, say, for example, what I do. So I take people out on safari. We go to different locations. We look for wildlife, we look for animals, and I interpret the bush. To the, uh, to the guests, um, that is a field guide. I take people out, I interact with the animals and the guests, show them the wildlife and, um, and interpret the bush and give them information about everything we see, from the plants to the, to the trees, grasses, to the birds, uh, the, the animals, the ecosystem, all of that, the stars, everything. We cover everything. The term for a game ranger technically is somebody that moves around um, and only interacts with the animals. They are there possibly managing areas, managing wildlife, um, so they generally don't have anything to do with the guests. So it's a different, uh, uh, that's where the terminology is different. But, um, sorry, someone shouting my yeah. But, um, but like I said, um, the, the both terms have been used uh, for for each profession, it, it it doesn't really matter. Some people, if I say to them I'm a field guide, they don't know what I'm talking about. I say game ranger, then they're like, oh, okay, you work with animals. <laughs> so so it's just sometimes easier just to say we're a game ranger um, or a ranger or a guide. Maybe you can use the word guide, but those are the the, the difference. Bet well, that's the difference between the two terms. So yes, I'm a field guide. <laughs> Leopards moved a little bit. It's almost like he's creeping forward. But I, still, I haven't seen anything else moving. He's been fixated on something he saw on the opposite side of the drainage, on the other side of the drainage line. Charles, you asked, is there anything, um, you, you asked, is there anything uh, as a, or, you know, anything known as a white leopard? Now, I've never, never come across a white leopard. There's snow leopards, however. There are snow leopards. Um, now, I think, um, 
Yeah, so there's snow leopards, but um, but uh, not a white leopard. Never heard of a white leopard. Um, I think um, you know what we've had. We've had quite a nice view of this leopard. I know there are some other people that are wanting to come in. Um, so I think what uh, what we'll do is we'll maybe make space for a while, let some other people come and view, and if they leave him, if he's still around in this area, we can always come back later and maybe get another view of him. Uh, maybe with the infrared camera, we can try possibly. Why don't we drive around and see what else we can find? Um, maybe we can find some more elephant or anything like that. So let's try that. While I do that, let's go back across to Taylor, who is still with some lions. He is indeed, everyone, but there we go. Our last really great view of him. And I say last because I think he's possibly going to cross the boundary and head south. And there he goes. But what a beautiful, beautiful leopard. And fortunately, we've had a great view of him. His scent marking. Let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. Scent marking. This is probably the dominant male leopard in this area. There are some other leopards around. But uh, he's definitely, I think, the largest. Um, and still in his prime. So, let's see where he goes. Like I said... I think he's going to cross our boundary. You see, and I think with it being so cool at the moment, this wind blowing, he's probably looking for some food. And um, and in these conditions, it's a lot easier for a leopard to hunt. He can stalk, he can get a bit closer. There's very little chance of uh, impala or any antelope picking up on his scent. And also, the sound, he probably won't make as much noise. Just disappearing behind those bushes. Hold on a second. Yeah, there's some impala that are alarm calling. It's actually. I just. I want to see something. Let's have a look. Remember, I spoke about his uh, tail and how he lifts it up. Let's uh, let's just have a look if he does do that with his impala. We spoke. Look there, he is doing it. There we go. He's doing exactly that. See. His, okay, his scent marking there now, but did you notice he lifted his tail while he was walking? And as I explained, that's to make himself a bit more visible. Um, showing that he's no threat to the Impala. He wants to get past them, get through this area, hopefully without drawing too much attention to him. Or, but Although they have seen him already. And there he goes, just south of our boundary. Well, what a wonderful view of him.